coupe, unable to distinguish license number. White, red. Nope. Kelvin. Harry Kelvin. I believe you gentlemen may be acquainted with the name Carol W. Chessman. Bandit? I don't know. They said you got him. They said Chessman. No statement. Hey, Chessman, you were the red light bandit? Yeah, Louie, we're transporting him right now. He should be there in about 10 minutes. It's gotta be a joke. Yeah. Hey, come on. What the hell? Me, the red light bandit? <laughs> Bring him over here. Yeah, right here. That's good. joke. Just look up there. It's a joke. You recognize him? Yes, it's him. With a crooked nose. Okay. That's all we need. Chessman is accused of five counts of burglary, 11 counts of armed robbery, two counts of kidnapping, one count of attempted robbery, one count of sexual perversion, one count of attempted rape. I'm satisfied that all of these crimes took place within the borders of Los Angeles County, and there is sufficient cause to believe the named defendant guilty thereof. You'll be notified of the date set for trial. A skin beeper? Is that what they think? Me? A rapo? Listen. I may have pulled some jobs before. I may have pulled a lot of jobs, but nobody has ever accused me of being a skinner before. Mr. Let Chester. me tell you something. That Folsom, they don't even talk to rapos. Guys like that are ostracized. They don't even speak to them. Look, Mr. Chester, I've been a defense attorney for over 10 years, and I can promise you that these red light bandit crimes are extremely serious. Perhaps more than you realize. Oh, yeah? I'm talking about a capital offense. Bull. If the prosecution can prove rape, robbery, and kidnapping with intent to commit bodily harm, you've had it. 
They can't. A 45 automatic was used in those red light crimes, just like the one they found near your car. 45s all look alike. You confess to the police. They're lying. They have no signed confession from me. Anything I said, they beat it out of me. Are you trying to claim that the... Yes, yes. You want to know? I was passing blood for two days afterwards. Mr. Chessman, a man who has been to Folsom, who has been to San Quentin, who has been in and out of jail ever since he was 16, is going to have a hard time trying to convince a jury of anything. Now, I would urge you to make a deal with the district attorney. I'm innocent. On every charge? You're damn right. Bunch of two-bit crimes. I'm going to rob somebody. I'm going to make damn sure they got the loot. Like a bookie or a pimp, something worthwhile. I'm going to rob some helpless lady of five bucks. I got my standards too, you know. I'm a pro. I'm not some red light bum. Do you know the prosecutor? A guy named Levy. Jay Miller Levy. In the Olympics, this guy would have a dozen gold medals. Have you ever been up against him before? Eighteen times. How many times did he win? Eighteen. Do you still want to plead innocent? Yes. All right, let's talk about the judge. Go ahead. His name is Fricky. Uh-huh. He specializes in capital punishment cases. In fact, I think he sent us more people to death than any other judge in the history of California. That's the trial judge. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I am not a sex maniac. Mr. Chessman, do you have any idea who the red light bandit is? Maybe. Well, then you damn well better name him. I just had to do one thing in that courtroom. Clear myself. I'm just going to prove it wasn't me. You are making a grave mistake. All right, that's fine. That's OK. That's fine. What does that mean? That means in propria persona. I'll defend myself. You'll get along very much better, Mr. Chessman, if you'll just remember that when a man acts as his own attorney, he has no greater rights than any attorney would in trying a case. Uh, Mr. Edmonds, you are ready, willing, and able to represent this defendant? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Your Honor, I'd like the opportunity to interview my defense witnesses. Well, uh, jail authorities can't just turn a man loose for the purpose of interviewing witnesses. I could interview them in court. I'd like to have the opportunity to do so. Well, that's one of the inconveniences you suffer when you insist on bullying your way through without counsel. Your Honor, I would like to take a lie detector test that the results may be used in evidence. Motion denied and properly presented. The court has pointed out I have not used the proper approach, but the court has not shown how I should have made the motion. Mr. Chessman, this court is not engaged in conducting a law school or in providing advice to the defendant what the procedure is. Now, if I found myself in the position in which you are now, I'd hire myself a very good lawyer. Your Honor, I'd like the record to show that he has been so advised by the state previously, but that he has refused it. This court will take a recess until tomorrow morning at 9.30. Mrs. Thompson, do you think you could bring in a death penalty in uh, circumstances where the defendant is not charged with murdering anybody? If the evidence showed that the offense was of such sufficient gravity to call for it, yes. Now, some people feel that something hard should be done, but they don't want to do it themselves. Is that your attitude? No. I would do my duty. Thank you. Your Honor, I've given serious consideration to the suggestion of the court, and I accept the public defender as legal advisor, and in that capacity only. 
The court appoints Mr. Edmonds to be legal advisor to the defendant during the course of the trial. You will continue questioning the panel. From where you are, Mr. Chessman. If Your Honor, please, the defendant would like to have the same privilege as the prosecutor has to stand in front of the jury box while the jury is being questioned. I don't think there'll be any occasion for that. Well, is just a prosecution habit? I ask the same privilege. It is not what the defendant wants. It is what the court rules. There is no objection to Mr. Levy standing before the jurors while questioning them. Now, the defendant may stand if he so desires, but he will stand by the counsel table. Now, please proceed with the questioning of the panel. Mr. Hart. Yes? Do you believe in capital punishment? For murder? Now, just a minute. We're not trying a murder case here now. Call the first witness. Uh, Your Honor. If the court please, I would like to ask that we be furnished with a daily transcript of these proceedings. Application for a daily transcript is denied. Call the first witness. Mrs. Virginia Gibbons, come forward, please. Virginia Gibbons. Mrs. Gibbons. You reside with your husband, is that right? That is right. And are you and your husband very good friends with a Mr. Jonagan Lear? Yes, very good. And did you and Mr. Lear have occasion to go out for a drive on January 19th in Mr. Lear's car? Yes, we did. And where did you drive to that evening? Up by the Sacred Heart Academy. In Pasadena? Yes. About how long had you been parked there when something unusual occurred? About ten minutes. Is it oh. Maybe they're just checking out around. I think there's a red light on. Oh, there's a red light on the car. Oh, must be. Well. Identification. What is it? Identification. Oh, for crying out loud. And what happened then? Mr. Chessman said it was a stick-up. Oh! By Mr. Chessman, meaning whom? The man sitting right there. When the defendant Chessman told you he was taking you with him, what else was said or done? Mr. Leah pleaded with him not to. Did he have a gun? On me, all the time. Don't hurt me. Please don't hurt me. Please. All right, I'm getting in. No! What did he say next, or do? He reached up with his left hand and moved the seat back, I imagine, about one notch, hoping that I knew what he wanted. I told him I didn't. And what did he say then? He told me to take my pants off, and I pleaded with him. Then he told me that he didn't want it that way. And did the defendant expose himself. That is right. Thank you. When you reported... When you reported these crimes to the sheriff's substation, what description did you give of this person? Well that he was tall and wearing a hat that you couldn't see his hair. How tall? I would say five feet, eight or nine inches. How much did this person weigh? I couldn't give you the exact weight. Well, had that question been asked by the deputy sheriff... Well, now, just a minute. That's a purely hypothetical question. It was not asked, so there is no such situation. You're not a good judge of weight, are you? 
No, Your Honor. But he's the man. Did Mr. Leah make any attempt to resist the bandit? You told him to shut up or he'd be taken away in a casket. Did this person state what his intention was in taking you back to the other car? You didn't tell me till after I'd gotten into your car. How long were you in the Ford Coupe? In the car with you. Is that what you mean? I object, Your Honor. It's not being responsive to my Objection question. Objection overruled. The witness has asked you to qualify your question. Well, the defense maintains his innocence. I don't care what the defense maintains. The objection is overruled. Well, I wasn't there, so I don't I know, don't what know you whether mean. you were there or not. That's the question we're here to decide. Now, I don't want any more arguments after I've ruled. Now, go ahead and ask your next question. You'll get along very much better if you'd show some respect for the court's rulings. To your knowledge, was this person wearing any rings, wristwatches, anything like that? You had gloves on. No further cross-examination. What the hell do you think I'm talking about? These are my witnesses, my alibis. You tell me you can't find them? They're working on it. Who's working on it? The public defender's office? Yes. Now? Now that the trial's already in progress? Just take it easy, Chief. Oh, sure, what the hell? It's only my life. Then you were parked on Mulholland Drive, high above the San Fernando Valley? Yes. How long had you been there when something unusual occurred? Uh, it's about half an hour. A car with the headlights on. A spotlight came up to me bumper to bumper. Did you notice the color of the spotlight? It was a red spotlight. Oh, here comes somebody. Ah! Oh! Look, I haven't got any money. Would you, would you please pick on somebody else? Sarah! Wait a minute! I show you the defendant Chessman sitting here. Does he look like the man? He could be the man. He looks like him. He does resemble the man. He resembles the man. Can you describe anything of his facial features, the color of his eyes, or anything? No, it was too dark. Well, what is there, then, that you see about me that resembles this bandit? Just the average type, the average weight. That's as far as I can go. Miss Sarah Loper, please come forward. Sarah Loper, come forward, please. Raise your right hand. You do swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. Be seated. Sarah, what is your business or occupation? I'm a student. And how old are you? Eighteen. Could you speak up, please? Eighteen. And when were you 18? On, uh, on March 2nd. Sarah, did you make any effort to notice his appearance? Did you get a good look at the shape and size of his nose, even though there was a handkerchief over it? It was definitely a hooked nose. Sarah, can you identify in this courtroom the man who outraged you sexually, as you have described here? Yes, I can. Who was it? It is that man over there in the blue pinstriped suit. Is there any question in your mind? No. There's no question. It is definitely him. 
Thank you, sir. Let me cross examine you. I will show you Exhibit 26. It's ridiculous. Your Honor, may the defendant approach the witness chair? No. I will allow you to approach the chair, Mr. Edmonds, but the defendant will remain by the table. Miss Loper, do you recall testifying in the municipal court to the question, could he have possibly been six feet tall? Your answer was, I doubt it, no. Do you remember? Yes. Your Honor, I would ask the members of the jury to please take note that I am clearly six feet tall. Did you report to the police that this bandit had a scar over his right eyebrow? Yes, I recall saying that. Will you please describe the scar? Well, I only saw it once. Where was it located? It extended from the eyebrow about a quarter of an inch. Your Honor, I think the jury can take notice, even from here, that I have no such scar. Did the bandit ask you for your purse? No. He made no effort, as far as you could determine, to find out if either of you had any money. Is that correct? I object to that, Your Honor. It calls for a conclusion and opinion from the witness. Objection sustained. Did he tell you that he was kidnapping you for the purpose of robbery? He didn't say anything. You've testified, Miss Loper, that your face began to swell shortly after this occurrence. Yes. Did that impair your vision? Well, I could hardly see out of my eyes. Oh, I could see the person clearly. I could tell who it was standing in front of me. Could you see at a distance of 50 feet? Oh, yes, I could. I was not blind. I... My eyes were swollen. They were not completely shut. Did you make a positive identification of this suspect through your window? Yes. What distance was that? Oh, a few yards. Could it have been 50 feet? Oh, no, no. I couldn't say for sure. Is that your best witness? One of them. He'll tear her apart. Now then, on this evening, you claim Chessman was present. Maybe you didn't hear what I heard in that courtroom today. By the time Levy got through with your witnesses, they didn't know Tuesday from Wednesday. He was obviously trying to trip them up. The jury could see through that. You still don't understand, do you? You're up against pros. You're not only a lousy lawyer, you're a lousy defendant. Now, I couldn't believe it. The first thing you do when you get on the witness stand is tell Levy how you stuck up some book he wants for 2,300 bucks. Now, that was a stroke of genius. There was nothing wrong with that. I'm showing the jury I'm not some two-bit amateur holding up helpless women for pennies and sex. You showed them one thing. You're dangerous. Look, no matter what they try to pin on me, I don't care how many trumped-up robberies, I am not a sex fiend. Right. You're telling me, tell the jury. Sarah Loper stated that she saw a scar on the red light bandit. And it's obvious I have no scar. Sarah Loper testified I'm shorter than the average man. I don't think at any time I could be mistaken for weighing 150 pounds or for being shorter than the average man. What was the motive in these crimes? This guy was running around with a gun, sometimes masked, sometimes not, doing a lot of vicious, a lot of stupid, a lot of depraved things. And yet, add up the money that was taken in these crimes. Seventy-seven dollars in all of the red light crimes. 
Now, do you think that any man who has just gotten out of prison is going to risk spending the rest of his life without parole for $77? Ladies and gentlemen, I maintain my innocence. I know in my heart I am not the person guilty of these crimes. And most particularly, I am not the red light bandit. I have looked you folks square in the eye from the very start. Now I hope you can look me square in the eye and tell that defendant and tell me by your verdict that you have done your duty. And when you get up there, don't start to compromise. Do your duty, folks, on every count, particularly those kidnapping counts for the purpose of robbery with bodily harm. I thank you, folks, for your attention. I'll say goodbye. Adjourned. The jury's out. <laughs> sure. Has the jury agreed on a verdict, Mr. Foreman? We have, Your Honor. Defendant will please rise. In reference 2407, we, the jury, in the above titled action, find the defendant guilty of robbery, a felony as charged in count one of the first degree. In reference 2408, we, the jury, in the above titled action, find the defendant guilty of kidnapping for the purpose of robbery and find that the person named, Virginia Gibbons, suffered bodily harm and fixed the punishment of death. In reference 2409, we, the jury, in the above titled action, find the defendant guilty of kidnapping for the purpose of robbery and find that the person named Sarah Loper suffered bodily harm and fixed the punishment of death. In reference 2410, we, the jury, in the above titled action, find the defendant guilty of robbery, a felony as charged. Rosalie? Rosalie, dear, where are you? Telephone, Rosalie. I'm late. I'm late. Is it important? It's Bill Edmonds from Los Angeles. Oh, I get that better. <clears throat> Hi, Bill. Rosalie, I got a case here, an appeal. A fellow named Chessman at San Quentin. He, um, well, they nailed him on 17 of 18 charges. He's under sentence of death. You think you can handle it? I was just taking off for a convention in Toronto right now. No problem. Go right ahead. He can wait. He's got nothing else to do. I'll send you the file. What'd you say his name was? Chessman? Oh. It's the rapist, the red light band. What? The sex fiend. Um, Bill, I'd better call you back on this from Toronto. Okay? Right. Well, bye, Mom. Mm -hmm. Rosalie, you're not going to, I mean, you won't be representing that man, will you? <sighs> Think about it. Daughter, you, you couldn't, you wouldn't. Rosalie, Take care. Rosalie, be the door.
la primera vez que está en el porque Is there anything wrong, Mr. Chessman? You got my letter. Yeah, well... I was expecting... Uh, well, I was expecting a woman, of course. Yes. Look, I got some people here. I got a lot of people here. who are planning to execute me. They're really working hard on it. I mean, this isn't exactly a misdemeanor rap, you know? The kind of help I need right now. Nothing personal, but what I need right now is a wily old legal hound who can figure out all the angles before they do. In that case, we seem to have something in common. Yeah? I haven't decided upon you as yet either. Look, don't get me wrong, Rosalie. Excuse me, but... Should we have a client-attorney relationship, and I admit that's doubtful, you will please call me Miss Asher. Miss. May I ask you, why in God's name did you represent yourself at the trial? I thought I did pretty good. It's my client who was a fool. You said it, I didn't. A rose is a rose, and a fool is a fool. You've read Gertrude Stein? One thing you get a lot of in prison is time. I read everybody. But not everybody reads. Well, I just happen to have an IQ of 140. Are you telling me that to impress me? Yeah, why not? Apparently it didn't impress the jury. To the jury, 140 makes me an egomaniac. Look, I can't help it. I have a brilliant mind. That's why you're sitting here right now with a total of 167 years plus a death sentence. Brilliant. Two. What? I got two death sentences. I haven't figured out yet how they're going to kill me twice. I think I'll let them work on that. Do you want a lawyer, Mr. Chessman? No. Why? Ego? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe that's it. Sure. Let me tell you something. All my life, I've done my own fighting. Me. So what you have right here, you have a natural-born scrapper. You know, like Jimmy Cagney? Okay, they nailed me. They got me for being a wise guy. They got me for not fraternizing with the cops. But then they're gonna get me for being that red-light bandit. Because they busted the wrong guy. And I'm gonna be the one who fights them on this. Me. Can you write a writ of mandate? I'll learn. Can you write a writ of certiorari? I'll learn. Do you have the transcript of the trial? No transcript. You can't make an appeal without a transcript. That's the basis of your whole appeal. The guy died. What? The court reporter who was taking it down in shorthand died of a heart attack right after the trial. What you should have done when the trial began was to request a daily transcript. I did. Denied? Denied. In, in that case, when the trial was over and the man died, you should have motioned for a retrial. Right. Denied? Denied. What happened to the transcript? They got somebody else working on it, some guy I never heard of. They didn't consult you? Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. This is a capital offense case. The defense should be consulted. Tell it to the judge. Are you interested? Does that mean you'd like me to help? Legal advice. I'll need legal books first. 
Uh, typewriter, files. I know the warden is going to take an act of Congress to get them here, so uh, you better get to work on that right away. I mean, if you would, please, Miss Asher. Where's the warden's mail file? Cell block two seems to be getting all the mail today. Hey, what do we got here? The People versus Carol W. Chesson. Hey, this is his trial transcript. Wonder what they sent it to him for. I don't know. A very strange they say he wandered very far. But it was going up the store. Hey, man, you've got any soap? Yes, sir. Check that. Hey, Chuck. The transcript finally arrived yesterday. It is one gigantic garbled mess. Sentences, paragraphs twisted out of all meaning. My cross-examination of certain witnesses is not even there. Am I supposed to base my appeal on this? I want to file a motion immediately to augment and correct the record. And furthermore, I want to determine the ability of the man who transcribed Mr. Perry's shorthand notes. P.S. I am still waiting for my typewriter. Uh, Your Honor, I've read the transcript, every word, and I feel what Mr. Binder has prepared for Mr. Perry's notes is as accurate a record as Mr. Perry could have prepared had he not been so unfortunate to meet his death. Well, if the record shows that the court is thoroughly satisfied with the record and finds, in fact, that Mr. Levy has done his utmost in preparing a correct record on appeal on this case. I don't understand it. We got the Los Angeles County Court Reporters Association that states that the stenographer's shorthand notes were undecipherable. And that good old Judge Frick, he certifies them. He can if he wants. You know, if they're so damn anxious to send me to hell, maybe I should point out that certain guarantees in the Constitution do not exclude Carol Chessman. Right now, we have certain facts staring us in the face. The transcripts have been certified. It's time now to get on with the appeal. Mr. Chessman. How old are you? I don't see what that has to do with All right, all right. I withdraw the question. We'll get on with the appeal. In that case, I shall have to insist that I be named your counsel of record. You mean my lawyer? Yes. No. Huh. Mm. There are legal difficulties ahead of us that are going to prove insurmountable All right, if you okay, don't. Here's what we'll do. I'll name you co-counsel. I'm sorry. It's not possible. Why not? I have my professional integrity, Mr. Chessman. A lawyer cannot be co-counsel with a layman. Well, I guess that brings us back to legal advice, huh? No. No? If you can't see fit to trust me now as your lawyer, then I shall have to withdraw from the case. Violation of 209 is kidnapping with intent to commit robbery and with bodily harm. There was no robbery in the Loper case. Indeed, the bandit allowed her to leave her purse behind in the car. There was no bodily harm in the Johnson case. Sexual perversion, section 288A, does not constitute bodily harm. The law states that bodily harm cannot be defined as psychological yeah, harm. Yeah, check and me. You know, what really gets me is the state Supreme Court agrees with Chessman. There was improper conduct on the part of the judge and the prosecutor. They admit it, and yet they turn down his appeal. Why? Because. Their improper conduct was Chessman's fault. He's the one responsible because he chose to represent himself. As you told me, misconduct is grounds for a reversal. Right, ordinarily. <laughs> Rosalie, what did you do now? Stop that. <sighs> Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Leave it alone, please. I'm going to get a broom. Just a minute. I said, don't touch it, Rosalie. Here. And then the first thing they do is force him to go to trial without adequate preparation. They refuse him a change of venue. They refuse him a daily transcript and wind up with one that is secondhand. Rosalie, it's not your case, remember. It is not your case. Now, look, I'll take care of the dishes. You're obviously too upset. Now, go on, get out of here. Okay.
You'll be back by seven, won't you? What? Larry is coming over to pick you up at seven. Oh, my God, I forgot. Um, look, Mom, you'd better call him and tell him. Tell him I can't make it. Where are you going? Bye. But for whatever it's worth, when the state Supreme Court denied your appeal, Judge Carter had a strong dissenting opinion. In fact, he said it was hard to tell what the trial was all about because of the patched-up nature of the transcript. One judge, Carter. You know, of course, they'll be setting an execution date now. I can hardly wait. You need time, Mr. Chessman, to take your appeal to the federal courts. You mean a stay of execution? Right. Where do I go? Well, if I were you, I would go to Judge Carter. Judge Carter. Get your typewriter back. Thanks. All the books you need? More than I need. You never told me. What? How old you are. I'm three years older than the last time you asked. Is there anything else you need, Mr. Chessman? You mean like a lawyer, for instance? No, I'm fine. Well, I'll try to keep in touch. You're sure? something ignominious in gulping hydrocyanic acid gas fumes when signaled to do so, and while being gaped at by at least 12 citizens as required by law. Dying in a gas chamber just doesn't make sense. Why should I die there? Why should I apologize to society for fighting for my existence? Mailroom detail, assemble in front of administration gate immediately. I just think you might have been a little more honest with us, Miss Asher. We had no idea when you requested the typewriter and the writing materials that Mr. Chessman would be writing a book. Believe me, neither did I. Well, somehow he found a publisher, and there's nothing we can do to stop it. Excuse me, Warden Teets, but did you ask me to come all the way from Sacramento to tell me this? Chessman has asked to see you, and I want you to make it clear to him in no uncertain terms. No more books. <gasps> <laughs> what do you call it? What's the title? I'm calling it cell 2455, death row. But don't ask me why. I wouldn't want to live there. <laughs> Is it any good? Any good? It's terrific. They've already given me a big advance. They're convinced it's going to sell a lot of copies. That's what they tell me. I'm not holding a gun to their heads. <laughs> <laughs> they really like it. I figure the way things are going, we're going to really need the money. We? Yeah. With all the legal and financial details, maybe I should consider getting myself a lawyer. What do you think? It's a possibility. I mean, now that Judge Carter's given me the stay of execution. Sixty more days. Sixty whole days. Still interested in being my lawyer, Miss Asher? Call me Rosalie. The famous San Francisco attorney, Melvin Belli, stated today that although he does not represent Carol Chessman, he will do everything in his power to fight any ban on Chessman's book, Cell 2455 Death Row. Belli states that even in the dark ages, prisoners were allowed to write and publish their works. In the meantime, the book is climbing up on the bestseller lists from coast to coast. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chessman. Uh huh. Silver. Uh, Henry Silver of the IRS. Have a seat. Thank you. Uh, the Internal Revenue Service has received your 
detailed financial report of your publishing proceeds, and we find it completely satisfactory. Good. Except, uh, Mr. Chessman, you neglected to sign the form to which the statement is attached. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm going to have it prepared outside the joint. The uh, joint? St. Quentin. Ah, uh, oh, I see. Yeah. Miss Rosalie Asher did the work for me. I see. If you'd just uh, sign there at the bottom. Can't. Oh, why, why not? Anything I sign at all, it has to be examined by the warden. And I think this just happens to be a matter between me and the IRS. You're perfectly right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if you, just uh, your signature here at the bottom. Got a pen? Oh, certainly. Here you are. Just a moment, please. See what I mean? Mr. Silvers, Warden Teets. I don't give a damn who you are or what you are. No one can come between a citizen of these United States and the IRS. This information is confidential. Our regulations say that... Are you trying to tell the IRS what to do? Now, do I get this signature or don't I? Here you go. The Perkins brief, the Hiller brief. Thanks. It uh, looks like Mr. Chessman will have a tougher time of it now. What do you mean? The radio, they said the Loper girl, Sarah Loper, you know, the one who... Well, what about her? She was just committed to Camarillo State Hospital. They said her mind is gone. Sarah begged him. She begged him with her prayers, but he wouldn't listen. The only way to restore my Sarah's sanity is to tell her that Chessman is gone. Gentlemen, I urge the death penalty because, in my opinion, it was the only proper punishment in this case. And since then, I have not found the slightest reason to change my mind. That's all. My resignation as senior medical officer of San Quentin can be directly attributed to the Chessman case. You might call it my own small voice in protest. But I have had long conversations with Mr. Chessman since he arrived, and I am absolutely convinced that he is not the sort of person who would commit the sexual crimes of the red light bandit. Mr. Rice. Ben, would you sit down, please? How yeah, would you like some coffee? Thanks. Mr. Asher, I... Uh... Rosalie. Oh, Rosalie. I don't know if you have uh, ever heard of me or not. Oh, you're being modest, Ben. There aren't many lawyers in California who haven't heard of Ben Rice. I'll accept that, whether it's true or not. <clears throat> and you, uh, you are certainly the one person who knows more about the Chessman case than anyone else. Chessman, has this got something to do with Chessman? Yes, I saw him yesterday. Uh, he knew I was coming up to Sacramento, so he asked me to talk to you for him. What about? He wants to make me your co-counsel. I see. I know, I know. It's all pretty sudden. And he didn't want to tell you himself. I'm sure you realize there are only six days left until the next scheduled execution. So I guess you could call this uh, an all-out, last-ditch effort to keep out of the gas chamber. And quite frankly, Rosalie, if I can be of the smallest bit of help, I can't blame him. I... Excuse me, I'm just sort of a surprise. Of course I don't blame Chess, it just... He never wanted a lawyer to begin with. And now he has two. Did he bring you up to date? Well, he told me he'd uh, hired a private investigator. A man in Los Angeles. In fact, I was just going over the report this morning. He dug up some information on the court reporter who took over the notes of the trial. The man's a known drunk, has a police record, and more. He just happens to be the uncle of the wife of the prosecuting attorney, J. Miller Levy. Well, well, well. How very nice to keep things in the family. What we have to do now is keep Chess alive, and that means somehow another stay of execution.
problem is I've got three men scheduled for execution on the 29th. And of course, there's only two chairs in the gas chamber, so who goes first? Chessman or the other two? Yeah, that's my feeling, too. We'll put Chessman in first, then pump out the chamber and take the next two. Way is it to the uh, the gas chamber? I don't mean the giant. So you're all right. The Alps. Judge Carter is in the Alps. Ben, there isn't time. We can't make it to Switzerland. No, no, no. The, the Trinity Alps, right here in California. I talked to his office. They say he's been up there for about a week on a hunting trip. Ben, you've got to find him. I hate to interrupt your vacation this way, Your Honor, but uh, we are rather pressed for time. Mr. Rice, you process that the law knows nothing about vacations or time, especially when the state is about to take a human life. Now, where can I sign this thing? What about... <coughs> right here, Your Honor. I just received word you've got a stay of execution. You're going to go back upstairs. Warden, I am sick at heart to have spoiled all your plans. Especially when you got everything all set up like this. I don't mind at all. Well, look at it this way. You still got the other two guys. I see you didn't smoke the cigar I left for you. Hang on to it. I might need it again. Warden, I'd keep to the left if I were you. That right turn is a killer. I'm sorry, Miss Asher, but his privileges have been canceled by order of the California Supreme Court. Wait the Attorney General Those feels orders. it sets a dangerous precedent. He's got a hearing coming up before Judge Lewis Goodman in the United States District Court in San Francisco, and he's got to be able to prepare for it. I simply take orders. We have a directive that none of Mr. Chessman's writings of any kind be cleared for publication. Oh, who wants to publish a writ of mandate? He might start working on another book. So, what are you so afraid of? There will be no more books. I wouldn't take any bets. Could you tell us, Miss Asher, why Ben Rice is no longer on the case? I have no idea. There have been threats against his life, but I don't know. What about you, Mr. Davis? Legal fees for a George Davis come pretty high, don't they? It is my strong belief that there may have been fraudulent misconduct in this case, and I'm certain that we can prove it. That is my only interest in this case. Hey! Up front, it's Chessman! Kill her! Herbert! Kill her the gas! Who did he kill? Just so there won't be any misapprehension, we are here to determine whether there is evidence of fraud in the preparation of the transcript. I'm not going to engage in a test, in this case, of the accuracy of that transcript. What's he mean? That's what this hearing's for. And does that include the ability of Mr. Binder to transcribe it? Or the inability of the man to do it? But that is what we are trying to find out. I don't think the Supreme Court of the United States intended me to spend days and weeks of time determining the accuracy of this transcript. That's exactly what they intended. Whether they did or did not, Mr. Chessman, I'm not going to do it. Your Honor, Mr. Binder, the court reporter, has been unable to read one page of the shorthand notes of Mr. Perry here in this courtroom. You can't expect Mr. Binder to transcribe one page in a courtroom. It's silly. Silly, what do you think I'm on trial for, purse snatching? Shut up. No, it's no use, Rosalie. Not here. 
We're dead. Death Row is sealed off from the rest of the prison. The doomed were put to death without fanfare. In 1930, the prison gallows were replaced by a gas chamber with the idea that cyanide is more humane than stretching a man's neck. For some reason, it's painted a bright green. A woman's group once saw it on a tour and asked, why the predominantly green motif? And Warden Duffy at the time replied, why not? You're still up. <laughs> I'll fix you some coffee, okay? Mm -hmm. What's the matter? What's the matter? Look on the table. Scum, lousy Jew scum. Go back to Kiteland and take the sex fiend with you. Rosalie Rat. <laughs> Don't answer it. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hello, who is this? Mom, mother, mother. how he got the thing smuggled out of San Quentin, but I can tell you right now there's a court order banning this book and we're going to do everything that's possible to stop its distribution. Hey, what's going on? What's well, happening? Who is this? Who is this? Bright? Trying to cut his throat. tell you the truth, Rosalie, I really didn't expect it. If this joint had a cocktail lounge, I'd buy you a drink. Now they tell me. After nine fun-filled years, the Supreme Court of the land announces that Carol W. Chessman has been denied due process. That his trial might just have been improper. Now, what do you think of that? Nine years it took him to come to that decision. The terrible part of it is people think you're the one that caused the delay. I don't care what they think. I'm going to get my day in court, Rosalie. I'm going to get Mr. Levy and Judge Fricky on that witness stand, and I'm going to ask them a few pertinent questions. Bone up, Chess. I promise they'll be ready for you. I'm boning up right now. I got the files back, the legal volumes, typewriter, thanks to you. I'm pushy. You're more than that, Rosalie. You're very bright. Thank you. Although I still don't know how old you are. Nope. Hey, guess what? I've done it again. You're the first to know. What? I've written another book. It's impossible. They search your cell every day. Carbon paper. How? I typed it on the back of carbon paper. Think they'd look there? It's 
called The Face of Justice. Enter the title page on a separate page all by itself. It says, for Rosalie. You like that? Isn't it a fact, Mr. Levy, that you're related to the court reporter, Mr. Binder? He's my wife's uncle. That's another way of saying he's your uncle-in-law, is that correct? Well, if you want to call it that, it's all right with me. Did you ever tell Judge Fricky that you were related by marriage to Mr. Binder? Well, to my memory, it was discussed in his chambers, in the presence of Bill Edmonds and others. Mr. Levy, did Mr. Binder ever indicate to you any portions of the rough draft that he would have to leave blank because he was unable to transcribe them? At that particular time, he was not satisfied. Did he ever, in your presence, fill in any of these blanks? Well, either he wrote in what he had read at the time, or he would tell me that he had made himself satisfied with what he had read from Mr. Perry's notes, and he would tell me what it was, I would put it in, and he would check it. In other words, he would just sit there in your presence, reading these notes over and over again until he thought of a transcription, and you would say nothing during that time? Well, it wasn't that simple. Uh, I might just sit there and wait. I might say something, I might not. I cannot give you that detail. I would be just guessing if I attempted to. You do solemnly swear that the testimony you may give in the cause now pending before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. There has been testimony before this court, Judge Fricky, that Mr. Binder, during the period he was preparing this record, was so intoxicated that he fell from an automobile and had to be assisted. Would you have felt that a person with such drinking habits was competent to prepare such transcript in a death penalty case? Quite possibly, Mr. Chessman. I've known of a number of instances. People who were prominent would go off on a periodic spree, and then in between their sprees would be men of exceptional ability. If you had learned that he was drunk as often as every third day during this period, you believe you would have conducted an investigation? On that alone? No. In having a transcript prepared, did you have in mind that uh, the prosecution alone should be the one to select the uh, court reporter? Well, the prosecutor didn't select the court reporter. I did. You were the one who selected Mr. Binder? Yes. Was it Mr. Levy who found Mr. Binder, his wife's uncle? Well, I, I can't say that Mr. Levy didn't participate in that information. Were you ever informed that these notes were undecipherable? I had information that in um, some respects the notes were not clear. Were you ever informed that other reporters had said they were unable to read those notes? No, that was something that came up afterwards. But I wouldn't have paid any attention to that because the, the fact that some reporters couldn't read the notes didn't show that other reporters weren't able to read them. Is it or is it not a fact, Judge Fricky? And you formed a personal opinion of the defendant's guilt long before the jury returned its verdict in 1948. At the conclusion of the trial? Did you before the conclusion of the trial? I might have at some stage. Prior to your instructing the jury? I would say yes. After I heard all the testimony. Have you stated publicly that in your more than 50 years as a judge, you have never encountered a case of a criminal who was less entitled to leniency or sympathy? Yes, I made that statement. And did you tell the press in 1954, before anyone gets too enthused about changing the court sentence, I would suggest each individual would feel its mother, wife, or daughter were forcibly compelled to submit to filthy acts of perversion? I don't remember that particular statement, but uh, I probably did say it. And did you also state, if we are going to grant a man leniency because he is able to get a book published, we might as well throw criminal law in the ash can? I don't recall. I, I won't say that I didn't make it. In the light of these statements, Judge Fricky, do you feel that you were influenced by your feelings about the case and the defendant in respect with what you did in the preparation of the trial record? Absolutely not. Sir, the record shows you denied the defendant a daily transcript. Isn't it your practice, normally, 
to grant a daily transcript when sought either by the defendant or the prosecution? In almost all cases where I ordered a daily transcript, it was requested by both parties. Can you recall any other case in your many years on the bench where in a capital offense, on a defendant's motion, you denied a daily transcript? I would say that there are none. Do you feel that a reason for your denial was an antagonism you felt toward the defendant because he was appearing in his own behalf? Absolutely not. And therefore, Your Honor, we move that the entire trial record be rejected as no usable transcript can be made from it. Your Honor, the transcript speaks for itself. It is perfectly acceptable. All right, go ahead. Go on. Tell me the rest. That's it. Judge Rexford, he denied everything. That's all. He claimed the notes were decipherable and the transcript adequate as long as 2,012 errors were corrected. Now what about Levy's uncle? What about all that stuff? The court feels that the relationship played no part in his having been employed. <laughs> oh, boy. Everything denied. I'll tell you what I think, Rosalie. And I mean this honestly. These people, they're out to kill me. That's what they want now. That's what they've wanted all along. It doesn't matter what I can prove. They simply want me dead. Gone, out of the way, forgotten. No more hearings, no more trouble. Dead. Well, okay. You give them the message, Rosalie. You tell them. Kill me if you can. Hey, Chet! How was L.A.? What you do down there, huh? Meet any movie stars? Hey, Chess, welcome home. Chess, uh... Well, George and I have been talking it over and George feels you ought to appeal to Governor Brown and throw yourself upon the mercy of the court. You mean ask for clemency? You've only got about three more weeks. You're gonna sit there and tell me how much time I got left? What the hell is that? Chess. Negative. I'm not pleading for mercy from anybody when I'm not guilty. It's how the hell do you expect me to do that? It's just that you... No, no, never. Forget it. I'm not begging for clemency. The same thing as admitting guilt. We're running out of appeals, Chess. But you're still calling the shots, you tell us. No clemency. Well, that does it then. We'll be in touch. Rosalie. I want you to go in an errand for me. There's a place on Gary Avenue in San Rafael. I want you to go over there. The address is 12006. Can you remember that? What's this about? It's for a guy named Phillips. I don't know, Mr. Phillips. Perhaps you could help me. Well, it's entirely up to you, of course, but I'd be glad to answer any questions. I... I think Mr. Chessman would like something... Something simple? 
Why don't you take a look at this, uh, this line over here? I'm sure you'll find something here that's acceptable. Miss Asher? <laughs> Miss Asher? I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right. Les dije a matar a gente que no se puede atender. Ahora viene que. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Be happy to answer any questions you, uh, you have for me. Uh, Mr. Chessman, is it true you filed an appeal to Governor Brown for clemency? No, my attorney, George Davis, did that on his own. I didn't authorize that. That, uh, that didn't come from me. Hmm. Do you concur? No, sir. I would never concur to any commutation of life imprisonment. Uh, I still want a fair trial. You are still defiant, then. Defiant? Hell, I'm not defiant. I'm innocent. <clears throat> Is there a chance now, do you think, to abolish capital punishment? Well, it would certainly come in handy. Frankly, I think that uh, Governor Brown would have a better chance of getting it through the legislature if he keeps me out of it. There's still a lot of fellows up there who uh, feel pretty strongly about this ogre, Carol Chessman. You are willing to sacrifice yourself. Are you a martyr? No, I don't think I qualify for the role. What you ladies and gentlemen don't realize, uh, perhaps, um, you take a situation where you have about 30 men and you uh, put them in a special place behind bars and uh, you feed them and uh, you let them get together once a day. Uh, they get to know each other. And then about once a month, you take them out and kill them one by one. <coughs> But each time, though, you replace the one that's been killed. I've seen about 90 men go that way. You call the place death row. I call it limbo, a monument of futility. You see, I think it's essential to jettison, to, uh, to throw out this uh, concept of retributive justice, or the idea that, uh, that good citizenship can be coerced, which I think is extremely wrong. I think. Uh, uh, I think I've demonstrated conclusively in my own case that uh, it wasn't possible to uh, punish me, uh, uh, it wasn't possible to coerce me uh, or to force me to do good. What you need is a more affirmative, uh, uh, a more uh, creative approach where before you, before you point out to the man what's wrong with him, you find out what's right with him, what he can do, what he can contribute. But still, you have the righteous shouting vengeance. Uh, I was uh, I was told uh, not long ago by uh, someone, Chessman, the only thing that'll cure you is a pound of cyanide. I said, thank you, Sigmund Freud. Merry Christmas. Another two weeks till Christmas. Well, just in case they don't get that far. <sighs> Chess. Okay, come on, let's have it. Bring out the Christmas list. These are strict instructions. Naturally. Let's see, you're not allowed more than five pounds overall. Santa Claus is coming to town. You're, you're allowed hard candies, but no chocolates. Chocolates, right. Very dangerous. You could cut your wrist on a chocolate. And the games? 
dominoes, checkers, chess. Good. Chess for chessmen. I'll take it. Next. Hey, what about uh, ping pong balls? The gang could really use some ping pong balls. I'll take a dozen. Please, Jess, if you know him, if you know who he is, even if you think you know who the red light bandit is, then please, please, in God's name, tell them who he is. Can't, Rosalie. Can't. In a recent development on the Chessman case, today, Dr. George N. Thompson, the psychiatrist who committed Sarah Loper to a state hospital, now states that her psychosis would have developed regardless of her attempted rape years ago, as her history indicated that she had, in fact, suffered from schizophrenia years before the rape attempt. It is his opinion that the argument that although Carol Chessman did not take a life, he took a mind, is invalid for that reason. But it would seem now, however, that it is too late. Chessman now has 19 hours before he is scheduled to be executed tomorrow at San Quentin. Warden Dixon. Well, I guess you've seen this cell before. I don't seem to have any trouble getting in here. My instructions were to, to give you this. Apparently, it's a lucky cigar. Thanks. We're being followed. Reporters. I think I know something they don't know. They've been following me all week. I suppose I should stop. What? On the radio just now. 60 days. Brown just gave him 60 days. Oh. They said it was because of Uruguay. Uruguay? President Eisenhower's due down there next month. They're concerned about student demonstrations if Chessman is executed. That's the reason? That's what they said. Oh, dear God, Uruguay. Open it up. We're going back upstairs. The governor's giving you a stay. You wouldn't be kidding, would you, Warden? Well, I better get busy. Tonight, you're gonna work tonight? I only have 60 days left. Some iced tea? No, thank you. I assume that you have the petitions. Yes. This one, the California Supreme Court will rule on Monday morning. Monday? Yes. Meeting early at 8 o'clock, two hours before the scheduled execution. This one is for you. I uh, hope you understand I can't act upon this until the California Supreme Court has made its decision. Yes, I know that, but we're not going to have much time on Monday. I thought if you could read this now, you would at least be prepared to make a quick decision. All right. Excuse me.
be in my office at 10 minutes to 9. If the state Supreme Court refuses to act, I'll tell you then. Thank you. Miss Asher, have you, uh, have you been representing Mr. Chessman all these years on death row? Most of the time. It's a long time to believe in a man's innocence. No matter what happens, I'll go on believing that for as long as I live. Seventeen crimes were charged to him, and it was simply physically impossible for him to have committed every one of them in the time they took place. However, that really doesn't matter anymore. His guilt or innocence on those charges isn't the question now. This man was victimized, Your Honor, by a court that resented his acting in his own behalf for his own defense. And I hope he isn't going to die because of it. Just think of it. Twelve years with nothing but that gas chamber waiting for him. If that isn't cruel and unusual punishment, then I might as well give up practicing law. Miss Asher, I hope you understand. I must judge this petition only on its merits. We are both, I believe, servants of the law. Of the law or of justice? You hang in there, Chess. See you later, buddy. We'll be seeing you, buddy. You'll be right back. Hey, man, I ain't gonna say goodbye to you. The two bucks I owe you, you'll be getting it back tomorrow, and you know it. Hey, just cool the chest. This one ain't gonna take either. is, Miss Asher. The place is pretty damn grim, and I would strongly advise that you not go in there. He is expecting me to be there. Well, of course, I won't stop you if it's your wish. It is. The guard will escort you. This codicil to my will is effective as of this date, uh, May 1st, 1960. All of the possessions above named, uh, I leave to Miss Rosalie S. Asher. Eh, listen, it's no big deal. Do you get the time, though? I'd like you to pick up that stuff in my cell tomorrow. I, um... <laughs> You're not gonna believe this, Rosalie. You've written another book? Yeah. Fiction. I think maybe I could sell it to the movies. figure it, the governor's out of it now. Yeah. He claims it's up to the California Supreme Court, mm -hmm. and they stack up at four to three against you. Mm. One vote. Yeah. Of course, that uh, one vote margin might change his mind. And don't forget, there's always a chance with Judge Goodman. Look, uh, Rosalie, uh, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to step outside for a minute. You want to talk to George alone? No, I, uh... I want to use the can. Oh.
We'll be down at the clerk's office tomorrow morning at 8. You won't forget. I have a date at 10. <laughs> right. Well, uh, I'll see you. Okay, George. Rosalie? You know what? What? After we win this case, I hope you'll invite me over to your house for dinner because I have a story to tell you. Okay? Okay. Maybe I'll find out how old you are. I'm 40, Jess. I was 28 when I first met you. It's a lifetime, huh? Yes. So long, Rosalie. So long. Gas chamber. Time and telephone check, please. Thank you. The Supreme Court of the State of California declares the petition for writ of habeas corpus and the application for stay of execution denied. This order is final forthwith. Are the judges still in chambers? Yes. Tell them we request a few brief moments to speak to them. Hurry, please. And therefore, on this basis only, 12 years, we beg you to reconsider. I'm sorry. The request is denied. Yes, Miss Ash. I promise you I'll remain right here by the telephone. We're on our way to Judge Goodman's office right now.
Goodbye, Chapman. I want you to call the warden at San Quentin immediately. I'll be on the line waiting. Thank you, Judge Goodwin. Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine, warden. Thank you. Goodbye. Take a deep breath when you hear a bell struck. It'll make it easier. Good luck. I'm sorry, you must have dialed the wrong number. But I dialed San Quentin. Sorry. Dear Rosalie, I hope you're able to get a little rest for the grueling hours ahead. It's now 7 a.m., and since you left, the guards have... I stopped writing to wait a while to see what the news would be. It's now 9 o'clock, and the newscast reported there had been no decision. They're making this a close one, Rosalie, whatever way it goes. With less than 60 minutes left, I want you to know how grateful I am for your help over the years. I realize this must be a terrible ordeal for you, too, and how much courage it's taken for you to carry on. Well, Rosalie, I just got the word. The California Supreme Court has denied all of our applications. How they could have waited until virtually the last minute, I'll never understand. And so, I want to say goodbye, Rosalie. As ever, Chess. <laughs>